Hello and welcome to the support exam session from ACCA. I'm Zayana and I'm the Business Relationships Manager and I've got here Alexander, the expert tutor from Kaplan with us today. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to introduce himself to you. So before I give floor to Alex, it would be good to actually know where are you joining us from? Where are you watching us from? And now over to you, Alex. Well, I was just about to say, Diana, I'm going to type in the chat panel as well so people will know where I'm from uh, or where I'm based at the minute. So I'm currently in Nottingham. Um, I was going to say good morning, but I don't know where everybody's logging in from. So it might even be good evening, good afternoon. And it might actually, upon reflection, it is good afternoon for us as well. Um, nice to meet everyone. Nice to see everyone joining live. As Diana said, my name is Alexander Beach. A um, little bit of background. I'll keep it really brief. I'm a fellow of the ACCA um, and I purely and, and truly and honestly believe that this is such a, a fantastic qualification and it's such a privilege to be here just for a short period of time to just give you a few hints and tips and, and tricks and bits of advice to do with the audit and assurance exam. Um, so I'll, I'll get into it and I think that's probably the um, best way to sort of start that. If you may just flick through to the next part. I know we've got a little sort of slide deck to talk through. Yes, just of course. Uh, just to cover very quickly some house housekeeping for the session. So first of all, we would like you to engage with us. So please drop any questions in the chat below. We'll be happy to answer as we go. And yeah, and let's start. Uh, so I'll just quickly move the slide. And um, yeah, so first question over to you, Alex. Um, so I wanted to set the scene. I think it's always really good just to give a bit of background on the exam. And if you've joined this webinar, well, you might know some of this already, or you might be a complete novice. So let's just start from a blank slate. It is a three hour exam, right, which might be a considerable length of time compared to some of the exams you've maybe done in previous studies. So that's the first thing to get over in terms of the hurdle. In terms of the structure of the exam, it has two sections. So it's got a 30 mark objective test question section, and that's broken down into three 10 markers. Within those three 10 markers, you've got like these little mini cases, and they can cover any element of the syllabus. The 10 marks are then broken down into five two mark objective test questions. If you're not familiar with that term, it basically means you could get A, B, C, D, or drag and drop, or different types of responses, but it's not fully constructed in terms of the written style. So hopefully I got that across in the right way. The other section of the exam is 70 marks. Now this is a, a, a sort of scenario based question and requirements. There are three of them. So there's a 30 marker, a 20 marker and a 20 marker. And as we're all accountants or chartered accountants, we should hopefully be able to add that back up to 100. That section B is more discursive, more written. You'd have to produce continuous written answers broken down into little subsections depending on the requirement. So that's the structure, that's the mark allocation, and that's the sort of breakdown on it. As far as my next point, which I really wanted to make, was the value of the exam. So yes, you've got to pass it to become an ACCA member, and that's kind of a given, but sometimes you just have to take a step back and reflect on why is the audit and assurance exam so valuable? Now, from my perspective, I came from a practice background, so it was very much ingrained in me that you needed to understand audit and assurance to become a chartered accountant and a, and a finance professional. You know, it underpins everything we do. But I understand that ACC is such a diversely career differentiated qualification that some of you might not work in that field. And that's not a problem. Because over the course and over the study period of learning more about the syllabus, you'll realize that there's so many interlinking and intertwining aspects of the syllabus. For example, risk and controls. Uh, you could talk about not just the audit, but the assurance process. And as you continue to work through the syllabus, you learn so much about the wonderful world of chartered accountancy and finance as a whole. So it really does underpin and have a lot of value. And that's why it's one of the major exams within your, let me get this right, within your skills level or applied skills level, should I say. Um, thinking about other exams and how it fits into your other exams. So at the applied skills level, you've got uh, an array of other exams to do, and it works very well if you've done your financial reporting exam beforehand. So naturally, if you are going to be doing an audit or you're going to be doing some form of assurance, you need to understand the accounting standards before you then can audit them. 
And what I've seen at Kaplan is different pathways. And I know that students do different pathways depending on, well, many variables, what their tuition provider offers, what their life's got going on, if they're in work, what goes on at work and how that fits around their work requirements or different family and personal commitments. But what I would advise is if you are doing and you're going to do the AA exam in March, make sure you are confident and competent when it comes to financial reporting, because you need to understand the standards to be able to audit them. Um, and then a couple of challenging topics is just sort of looking over at my notes to make sure I'm covering all my bases. The challenging topics include risk. So there's a bit of audit risk in there and you need to understand the risk of not giving an appropriate audit opinion. And what I find and what the examiner's report regularly states is that students underdevelop their risk responses. So you can be really good at identifying the audit risks, but not so good at explaining why they're important. And I think maybe I'll just pause for a second, one, just to grab a little sip of my coffee, and two, just to see if there's any questions that come off the back of that key topic. Because sometimes in the classes I deliver, people have little extra sort of um, probing points when I mention audit risk. And if you don't, I've got plenty of things prepared, don't worry. Yeah, it's excellent, Alex. Thank you so much for covering the challenging topics as well. So I'm sure students are uh, willing to hear about that. We had some questions actually about asking us if the session will be recorded. It stays on YouTube and it's available on demand. So if you cannot join us live, you can always watch it on demand later on because it stays on YouTube. Right then. Thank you very much, Diana. Picking back up where I left off. So when it comes to audit risk, just to summarise that again, state the risk. You need to explain why it's a risk and then fundamentally tell me how you're going to fix it. And that's some really good exam technique that if you could take away just one thing from this session, take that away. The next challenging topic, which I see regularly, is procedures. And as students, we like to have a structure to our answers. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of a hint and tip on this one. When writing out procedures, think about it like this. If I wasn't working in the world of accountancy or assurance, how would I instruct somebody to gather evidence? So you're a bit of an investigator, which is quite exciting. And I often get my students to follow a three step approach. I say, right, tell me an action. So tell me a doing word, a verb. Tell me a source. So what is it you're going to look at? Where are you going to gather the evidence from? And then tell me an objective, which links back to financial statement assertions. And that includes things like cut off, valuation and accuracy. Now, obviously, I could talk about this for days, but we don't have a great deal of time. But if you remember the three steps for procedures, that will ensure that you cover the detail or the level of detail you need to for that tricky area. Action, source, objective. One last tricky topic, Diana, and then I will move on. Uh, reporting tends to be a tricky, tricky topic in AA. And I think that's because it's quite um, it's quite technical in nature for some people, particularly if you don't work in assurance. So commercially, I think it would be a good idea for everybody who's watching this, not just now, but watching it back, as Diana said, to just check out a couple of audit reports, familiarise yourself with them, have a look at the structure of them and the contents, and then you can go through the studying of, well, when and where do we structure the audit report and what types of different paragraphs do we need to put in there? But that's a, a story for another day. One of the other great things about these tricky topics is if you can really get your head around audit risk, if you can understand how to produce audit procedures, and if you become more comfortable with audit reports and assurance reports, they all pay dividend massive amounts of dividend when you move up to the strategic professional level. Now, by dividend, I mean marks. So if you do SBR, strategic business reporting, that builds on FR and AA. And then if you choose advanced audit and assurance, well, the AA syllabus and the SBR syllabus underpin that advanced option. And that's another way of making sure that you are prepared for your progression through the qualification. All right. Excellent. So let's move to the next question. So what are the key pieces of advice for how to prepare for a, a exam? Um, structured learning is my first bit of advice. I think you need to have a study plan. So at what phase and at what sort of stage you are throughout your studies. So we could talk about it in sort of like a three step approach. There's a lot of three step approaches in my presentation today by the sounds of it. So acquiring the knowledge. So through some form of tuition, and that could be through a, a learning provider or it could be through studying yourself and acquiring the knowledge and building a good foundation to build on. The second stage would then be revision. 
Now that revision process is encapsulated through uh, some forms of summaries, um, some forms of question practice, and really looking at where your knowledge gaps from the tuition fears are and identifying areas that you then need to build on. And then finally, the last stage is lots of practice. And there's so many available resources on the ACCA's website where you can check out, you can use the computer-based exam software. I think it's called CBE, Diana might want to uh, correct me, but there's lots of practice on the ACCA Study Support Resources website. So theory, learning, the syllabus, revision, making sure you're plugging any knowledge gaps, and then finally, lots of exam question practice. I think the next part of my how to prepare for the exam includes exam practice and the ACCA study support resources website Diana so I've covered off everything there so I'm happy to move on to the next stage should you wish yes and just to mention as well so people who do go to workshops and webinars uh, which are available uh, on our AC global website we'll be also signposting some links at the end of the session as well just to make sure you know how to attend, where to go, how to sign up for them, because students who do actually attend those do score 10% higher than UK average, which actually shows how useful these webinars are. That's that's a really solid bit of advice, Diana. And I've just taken a second to check if there was any questions in the chat, and there was from Anu. So Anu, are there theory questions expected in the exam? Um, I found him, but yes, there is a need to understand the theory. And the advice from ACCA and myself would be sometimes it's worthwhile starting with an, an audit standard, uh, explaining what it means and how you would, for example, gather evidence and then using the scenario from there. So you do need to understand the theory that underpins your actual application and then applying the scenario from there. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, looking let's the, final tips. <laughs> looking at the next final tips point, um, I have a massive amount of, um, what's the word I want to use here? I want to be really correct in the way I see this. I think value to place on when you are going for your exam, and, and many of you will be going for it for this March, but whatever sitting you are choosing, you need to be prepared both physically and mentally. And your physical well-being and your mental well-being are extremely important. And I also know that there's a, an array of resources and webinars and support on the ACCA's website for students. But speaking firsthand and, and seeing over the year students when they go to their exams, I know when I went for mine, I needed a good night's sleep, so physical well-being. I needed to get there with plenty of time because at the day, in my time it was handwritten exams. And I know that many people still go to exam centres. But I suppose what I'm trying to get across from a very sincere perspective is you can acquire as much technical knowledge as you possibly can. But there's a point to accept that you need to also look after yourself, get a good night's sleep and be prepared the next day so that you can go into that exam giving it your best. My next piece of advice would be to share and engage with others. You truly learn by teaching and discussing. Um, and I know firsthand the, the sort of typical type of people who, who want to learn generally also really want to help other people as well. So if you are in a, you know, a scenario where you're speaking to, uh, it might be people who are also studying or even those who aren't studying, like friends and family, and you want to involve them in what you're doing, because it's a very big part of your life studying, isn't it? If you were to sit with them and I'll give you a scenario and say, oh, do you know what? Uh, tonight, just before dinner, could we sit down and just talk about uh, audit risk? And you could hand them some of your revision notes. And I know Diana's smiling because this is something that I imagine you'd be happy to do. Even if you aren't, you know, they're not an auditor, they would still want to help you. So make sure you share and engage with others and learn through teaching. And my final bit of advice, because I am conscious that we're coming up to quarter past, is go to the exam with a game plan. Make sure you know how long you're going to spend on section A, which is roughly 40, no, 54 minutes, and know exactly how long you're going to spend on each part of the requirements for section B. Make sure you know which order you're going to start your questions in. So don't be scared to start them in any order which makes you feel comfortable and you can build your confidence from there. And also, when you are in that exam, Focus in. Don't worry about what's going on around you. If somebody looks like they've maybe finished or if they're popping up to go to the loo, your game plan is to be solely focused on what you're doing and work through that plan because it is extremely highly correlated that those students who go in with a game plan of how to, let's say, attack the exam, that's maybe a bit strong, but 
break the questions down and have a bit of a an approach to any game like you would if you excuse me like you would if you're a football manager or any types of sport going with the same level of commitment you would to any of those equivalent games that's amazing examples alexander thank you so much i find it really useful personally for myself and imagine students will find it very useful too just to remind you so there is a global get ahead session tomorrow at 1 p.m so there'll be a link and a section below in the comments as well so in case you want to join it and learn about acc resources uh, and there are also in focus webinars coming in february so it's for aa and for triple a as well so i'm sure this will help you to get prepared if you're sitting this march so good luck to you if you're sitting this march or you're getting ready for june session and i think that's everything from us today uh, i don't see any more questions in a chat that we need to answer i can just see links keep popping up which Brilliant. you can and just, save and just to pick up where diana left off best of luck with your exams in march and you know the, the, the future sittings uh, and i very much hope to sort of help you all in the future again hopefully you found today useful and best of luck thank you goodbye see you later